Welcome to Bike Social. Welcome to our episode of homeschooling. We hope you've enjoyed this series. And today we're going to look at what happens when you add a pillion and luggage to your motorcycle. Now, when Mr. Honda designs a motorcycle, he doesn't design it for me or for you. He designs it for a general public. By that, what I mean is the bike must work for somebody who's five foot six and 11 stone. And it's also got to work for somebody who's six foot four and 18 stone. And it's also got to work on a huge varied amount of terrain. So it's got to work in the highlands of Scotland. It's got to work around town. It's got to work slightly off road, over potholes, over speed humps. And it's also got to work when you add luggage and when you add a pillion. So generally speaking, bikes are safe when you add luggage and a pillion. Don't get too freaked out. But what I'm going to tell you is how the bike changes when you do add weight to the rear. Now, hopefully you're adding luggage and pillion to the rear and not the front, unless you're giving ET a test ride. Now bikes react differently depending on their suspension. So an adventure bike compared to a sports bike will be slightly different because the adventure bike has more travel in the suspension. So let's look at our little diagram of a Honda CB500X or pretty close. When we add luggage and when we add a pillion to the rear, the rear is going to compress. When the rear compresses, we are adding laden sag. I know it sounds like a technical term, but essentially the bike sits like this. We add pillion and we add luggage and it compresses, it sags. When this happens, it reduces ground clearance on corners, but it also affects the front and it affects the geometry so the bike doesn't steer as nicely because it's sat further back. If you want to know about rake and trail, check out one of our previous videos. So how do we resolve this? What we need to do is change the rear suspension. So here we have a rear shock for a Honda Blackbird. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is the preload adjuster. This is the spring. Now if you can imagine that this spring is twice the length and we have a tiny little bit of preload, this spring is going to bounce around freely. Okay. If we make this spring half the size by adding a massive amount of preload, it's hardly going to move. So we are adding load to the spring. So once we add preload to this spring, we are reducing the amount of laden sag. So we are reducing the amount the bike will sit when we add preload to our shock. Now some bikes are like this, like the CB500X, that we have to manually add the preload with a C-spanner. Some bikes will have a remote preload adjuster, which is like a, a giant knob underneath the pillion seat at the back. Um, bikes like the Honda Fireblade and the Africa Twin will have electronic suspension, which is dead easy because all you have to do is press a button and tell the bike that you are adding a pillion, a pillion with luggage or just luggage. Once you've done this, the bike will have less laden sag. It will dramatically change the handling and improve the steering. So we've spoken about how adding a pillion and luggage affects your handling and your suspension. Now we're going to give you some basic tips on riding with luggage and the weight of a pillion. And before you add your pillion, have a chat. It seems pretty simple and straightforward. Have they got a bike license? Are they sober? Were they scared the last time they went on a motorcycle? And have a rough kind of gauge of their size. Then also build up some kind of communications. So if you're riding the bike and you tap them on the knee, you're going to accelerate or, you know, point at the fuel cap means we're going to stop for fuel, point at the cross helmet, we're going to stop for a drink. Just basic communication and reassurance. So once you've built up that kind of rapport and you've got the communication going, first the rider gets on, not the pillion. So get on the bike as you normally would. Then side stand down. As you're sat on the bike, keep your foot behind the side stand, keep the bike on the side stand and allow your pillion to clamber on in any shape or form they require. If they want to treat the back of the motorcycle like a small tree, it doesn't matter because you've got your foot, all the weight is on the side stand and your foot is behind the side stand so it doesn't flip up. Once they're securely comfortable, make sure they're correct and comfortable on the bike. Many times you'll pull the bike up the pillion will shuffle because their jeans aren't comfortable, the jacket, and it causes instability. Get them comfortable, get them sat upright, make sure you've got that communication, 
then the sides stand up and we're away to go. That's straightforward and that's simple. Within the first mile or so, again, build up that communication, check that they're all right, check in the mirror they're not crying, uh, build up that communication and take it steady and take it smooth. It is brilliant fun to wheelie away and scare them to death, but don't do it. Just build up that comfort, build up the communication. As you're riding, you need to be smoother than you normally are. If your bike is fitted with a quick shifter, use it. The gear changes need to be really, really smooth because that's when you get this rocking effect when you get headbutted by your pillion. Also on the braking, nice and smooth, nice and progressive. Don't ride too aggressive. And when you're riding with the extra luggage and the extra weight of a pillion, the performance of your motorcycle is reduced and so is the braking. So an overtake that you might think is easy may require you to drop down a gear or you may need a larger space to overtake because you don't have the performance because you've significantly increased the weight because you've now got two riders plus luggage. And from one of our previous videos, you've got more aerodynamic resistance. The same applies for the braking. You may feel the ABS come in slightly sooner and your braking distances will be longer. But you have more usual fork travel because you've got more weight diving onto the front and because you've got more weight, your braking distance is longer. Again, this is pretty obvious. In the wet, double it again. Your brake distances are huge when you're two up with luggage in the wet, especially on cold temperatures. Some models, some bikes, you can change the fork settings. If you're going to go on a touring holiday and you're going to be two weeks fully laden with luggage, pillion, and you're riding quite aggressively, then you may want to add some preload um, and compression just to reduce the amount of fork dive. Okay, when you finish your ride, the pillion gets off first. Don't get off and leave your pillion still on it. Bike will fall over in the petrol station. So again, come to a halt, side stand down, foot behind the side stand, lean the bike on the side stand, ask the pillion to get off in ever way shape they manage. It doesn't really matter, but the bike will remain stable and secure. Once they're off the bike, you then get off the bike. Simple. You on, them on, they off, you off. Easy. So we've spoken about adding your pillion, how to get them on and off the bike, how that affects and how you should change your riding. What we also want to touch on is luggage. You've got many different options. You can carry a rucksack, your pillion can have a rucksack. You've got tail packs, hard luggage, panniers, tank bags, roll bags. There's a huge variance of what you can use. It's down to your personal taste and the bike you ride. Some people prefer a tank bag, some people hate them, and vice versa. What I would advise is that you spread the weight out evenly. So if you've got hard luggage, panniers at the back, don't have everything in the left pannier and nothing in the right pannier, otherwise your bike is gonna be awesome around the left and shocking around the right. And again, if you've got a top box and you fill that full of lots of weight, then it's gonna affect the stability because the weight is high. You wanna try and keep the weight low. So your heavy stuff, try and get in your panniers, your lighter stuff in your top bag. Little bit of advice, try and get a nice balance, try and get a nice weight. If you're going on a long trip for a couple of weeks, simply fill your panniers at home, measure them on the scales, try and get them about level, and then put them to the bike. Don't put them on the bike and then load them, load them separately, weigh them, then add them to the bike. 